Today I'm joining Jeroen and Reggie on a Lagoon 550 foot catamaran, five miles further to uh, another bay to go to the supermarket. I'm gonna leave my boat here. Buddy, ready to go? I forgot how easy it was to sail when you have a windlass and you don't have to pull it up by hand. Look at this view. Isn't this amazing? I'm so incredibly grateful that I'm allowed to live this lifestyle. And I know a lot of things have gone wrong in, uh, in the past, but uh, these moments make up for everything. How's the captain doing? Good, relaxing. <laughs> What I love about catamarans is that everything is just standing here, just like that, and 25 knots of wind, nothing is falling over. Let's try that in my boat. <laughs> and it's so comfortable being on a catamaran. Oh my, it's so comfortable. Still, I wouldn't want to go back to crewing on somebody else's way more comfortable boat than mine. I actually really love my boat. She's, she's pretty, I think. She's. Uh, I'm comfortable, but she's mine, you know, like, I, she's mine, she's my private space, and I can do with her whatever I want. That's where the town is, and also Pineapples Bar. I think we're going there too. This is Green Turtle Key, the island of golf carts and colorful houses. I don't know golf carts here. Well, there's an old one over there. There are a lot on the island. I showed this island on the previous video, so I won't do it again. So, uh, how much were the groceries? $419. Jeez. And the beer was? $58. $58, $58 for 24 small cans. We are going to the Green Turtle Yacht Club, which will probably be the last uh, fancy dinner for me in the next five years or so. <laughs> this is the restaurant, it's still early yet, but I wanted to show you the bar. It's full with uh, dollar signs everywhere, dollar bills, sorry. seen anything like this. Reggie, what's my drink? What? A tipsy turtle? A tipsy turtle. <laughs> and this Debbie's tipsy turtle. Tipsy turtle. Well, cheers guys, thank you very much. This is a other seating area that belongs to the bar here where you can also sit. Sometimes I do feel like a little guilty about they've taken me to so many places in the last month. I do however believe in paying it forward and I really hope that in the future one day that I can also do that to other people. My laptop charger isn't working anymore. No. In the first world, I would have Amazon to myself a new one, but we're not in the first world, so I'm trying to fix it. Seems to be a problem with um, with the connection at the end, so I'm gonna cut a piece out and then solder it back together. So how these chargers seem to work is it's a round cable. There's always a plus and a minus, just like with boat stuff. And this outer cable that goes around it is uh, looks like it's a minus, and the plus will be. Uh, this cable and I disconnected this black one which is the minus from the other side of here and I'm gonna connect this minus directly to these outer wires and that then it should be fine again. What I'm guessing what happened is there are these uh, hatches here and it probably got in between it got stuck and folded double. 
Oh well, we'll get it fixed and otherwise otherwise we'll figure out a different solution. To see if this soldering is gonna actually work, I just wrap the wires together for now. Let's put the inverter on. Still no sparks, so that's good. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Oh look at that! Yeah. Oh no, I'm so stupid. I put this thing down on the cable. Of course. <laughs> One more thing to fix. Also, I wanted to say that this is not a tutorial on how to fix your uh, how to fix your MacBook charger with uh, electrical wire and um, you know and this and this stuff. But you know, if you ain't got anything else, then you gotta do it with something. Okay, I put it all back together, as far as you can call that, put back together, but these things will break when you open them up. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I can make videos again! Good morning, gonna move to another place today. It's uh, been blowing pretty steady, 25 knots plus the last five days, so it's gonna calm down a little today. That's also why you see so many boats are in the anchorage, because this bay is really protected. It's a beautiful sunrise. My dinghy is on deck, because I tried to fix it, hopefully with more success now than the last time with all the leaks. to a new place. I'm uh, getting a little nervous and excited at the same time. Nervous because, uh, you know, there's always something that can go wrong. But excited because, uh, ah, really like my life. There's uh, no place I'd rather be. The first stop is going to be Spanish Key, which is here. And it's about uh, 15 miles away. Maybe later that day, still continue here to Adams Key, I'm not sure yet. Dolphins! <laughs> For the next hour I'm just gonna be on one tack, meaning I don't have to change the sails and I'm gonna sit back, relax, listen to the ocean sounds and alternate that with listening to my favorite music. A, ah, no, not the coffee. All right, attempt number two. No more coffee close by. So you and Reggie just arrived. I was like, hey, why do you park your boat so far away? Usually they are like next to me. Um, apparently there is a shipwreck. I didn't know where it was. We're gonna dive it or snorkel. That's nice to, you know, travel together because, you know, they know where everything is. That's been really, really easy. Jeroen is picking me up. We're probably going to another anchorage later today. And then we only have to put one dinghy in the water. I mean, mine is in the water, but I have to put the engine on and take it off. <laughs> Thanks, Jeroen. Yeah. There it is. Looks tiny. It is, like it says now. 
we're gonna continue to Allen's Pensacola Key. Uh, the shore is over there, so I'm just gonna pull up anchor and then without starting the engine, I'll just drift away from shore and I'll just pull out a sail and we'll go. If you don't have to use the engine, why would you? And we're on the way again. Should be about two to three hours to Islands Pensacola Key. I'm a little jealous on the light sail. There's a little uh, trail all the way over there which goes to the from one side of the beach to the other side. Let's uh, check it out. Always when I look at my boat, I'm actually pretty proud of myself. You know, I, I didn't grow up in sailing. I was 30 years old when I was on a boat for the first time as a crew member on other people's boats. And uh, I know she ain't perfect, but I made her good enough to sail from uh, Guatemala to Honduras to Cuba to Jamaica and to the Bahamas which were all difficult trips and uh, yeah I'm actually pretty proud of that and it's actually really nice when somebody tells you they're proud of you isn't it but then how often does it actually happen you know not that often I I bet that I can think of three things that I am proud of in your life, even though I probably don't even know you. I I'm proud of the fact that you are trying to make something positive out of your life. And how I know that is because, you know, that's all I'm doing. I'm trying to make something positive out of my life. And if you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been watching my videos. I am proud of you for, oh, for making mistakes. If, if we wouldn't have made the mistakes that we've already made, we wouldn't have been the man or woman that we are right now. And uh, third, I am proud of you for, for the accomplishments that you've already made in your life. I think often we focus too much on the negative and we should focus a bit more on the positive. Yeah, that's like three things I just mentioned that I'm already proud of you and I probably don't even know you. Like, I challenge you, like in the comment section of this video, write down three things that you're proud of that general things in your life are things that you've accomplished. All right, let's go explore. Cruisers from all over the world have uh, hung something on a tree and written their name on it. Working in the mast, and there are a bunch of sharks. There's one over there, right? Two right on the solar panel, one in the back. Because uh, yeah, these these are rivets, pub rivets. Uh, this is actually through bolted. I'm at the spreader, and um, yeah, this one here, this one was broken, so I'm gonna through bolt this one. I don't have another piece that I can stick through here. I'll do that in the future. This is still fine. Today I'm going to Foxtown, which is a town where not a lot of tourists go to.
on the way. It's dead calm, raining a little bit, and my jib is tacking, so I have to do something. I'm almost there. Today I'm going to try to drop anchor only on sails. There's no one else here, so it seems like a good practice place. I just let out 50 feet of chain, and the theory is that I'm backwinding the jib. Uh, and that the boat will go backwards, but the theory is that the wind is coming straight from the bow, the front of the boat And it's not. It must be due to the current, but the wind is coming from there And the boat is sideways, so I guess I can just pull out the jib to, star oh, to starboard a little bit And give it a little bit more pull on the anchor with the jib So that the, so that the anchor will set and then uh, let out more chain I think this is the theory. Jib is uh, backwinded, as you see, is uh, pulling on the chain. So now it sets the anchor, and now I'm gonna let out uh, the rest of the chain. Let's go check on the anchor and see if it works. That actually worked. I'm surprised. Usually, when I do things for the first time, they. Uh, they don't work. <laughs> it worked. Nice, I'm gonna do this more often. The town is over there, let's check it out. Just parked the dinghy. The boat is, well it's over there, really small, left to that uh, little island. And uh, yeah, the town is known as really authentic, not being um, affected by tourism. There's also nobody here, <laughs> it's really quiet. 